just as we were getting stuck in the ice. I saw a headline in my mind's eye that said, parent leads his children to death. And that wasn't just a flashing thought, that was a reality of the day that extended into two days, two weeks, three weeks. could have killed those who I, I, I loved the deepest. I've got so many different emotions about this trip. I'm, I'm joyous about it, I'm excited about it. I'm terrified about it. I've always been fascinated by the idea of the uh, Northwest Passage, the, the Arctic Grail, um, a shortcut from the Atlantic to the Pacific. And one night at a dinner in New York, somebody asked me, you know, of all the sailing exploits that you've done, what would you like to do most? And I said, the Northwest Passage, without thinking. It just came off my lips. And as I was going back to the apartment that night, I thought, I've got the boat. And I've got, I can produce, basically, I can produce documentaries. And I've got the opportunity, and I think I have the funding. I knew who to approach. And one thing led to another, and all of a sudden it just sort of took on a life of its own. maybe 15,000 offshore miles with my stepdaughter and immediately that fell into place. Dominic, she'd be perfect for this. He approached me about two years ago with this crazy idea to go through the Northwest Passage. Dominic's boyfriend, Clinton, he is a, a master captain. He's forgotten more than I'll ever know. So those were the first two. And that's where you need to do a course adjustment, which I'll show you. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me when it's, when it's information overload. I think I got it. Cool. My son Sefton has been able to find the time from the fall semester of college to join us on the trip. And he's uh, 22, and this really will be, as far as I can remember, the, the longest hunk of time that he and I will, will have spent together. We've, we've spent time together in summers past, in vacations past, but it hasn't been concentrated like this. <laughs> My name is Sefton Theobald. I was born in Newport, Rhode Island. I'm uh, currently a student at University of Colorado, Denver. I've never actually spent this much time this close to my father, so I'm actually very excited to do that. Get to know him, get to show him how I've grown up as far as I have. 23 years ago, Dominique's mom, Chauncey's mom, Sefton's mom and I were married. And Sefton came from that marriage. I had these two stepchildren who I fell madly in love with. Dominique was four or five at the time, Chomps was seven or eight. I head over heels fell in love with Sprague. Grown, huh? <laughs> and hey, we got one more here who's going to get you a tour. Here we go. Right here is the kitchen, and I like this kitchen. I think I like this a lot. Um, he and I were, were had a, a, an incredible connection and, and relationship. I just remember him as, as you know, um, funny, he'd always play these jokes, and, and uh, just a great sense of humor. So I think, I mean, I can speak for myself. Um, the divorce, when, when they divorced, was, was definitely sort of a, a slap in the face. And as, as life evolves, the, the marriage didn't work. 
Um, we were living in L.A. at the time, and they moved back to Michigan, and I stayed in L.A. Hey, we miss you. Hi. Hi. We miss you. We, we miss you. There were bitter feelings all around, um, but I'm really proud of the way the kids and I worked over the years. You know, it began with emails, and then there was, um, I think, an opportunity to come out and visit him. Um, with Sefton. She came to stay and we had we had the talk and it was a oof, I gotta start tearing up. But out of that came a reconciliation. Whew. <laughs> a huge love. Um, Chance and I went two different directions and we didn't get a chance to talk. Tell me when you're gonna report. Anytime you wanna go. I just gonna say, Merry Christmas. I said, Merry Christmas. Um, I hope to see you soon. California is great. I don't know what to say. And there was something that was not right. And, you know, I didn't know what it was. I was just too young to interpret, really. And we went on a vacation to Michigan to visit my grandparents. And my mother called up Sprague, you know, back in Los Angeles. And she hung up the phone. She said, you guys are never going to believe this. But when we get back, he's going to be moved out. It was like that. And um, right then and there, I was just pissed. I just felt like it was deeply irresponsible to, to move a family out there and then just abandon them in a place that they had no business being anyway. And um, I remember just completely shutting Sprague off, and I did for probably almost 18 years. He called and said, I really want to be a piece of this project. And I, I said, you know, that'd be great. And we kind of left it at that. I didn't set out to do this trip with family. That was not the plan. Uh, just slowly, family started joining. You know, I've got three free months. I've got summer vacation. This will come along. I said, this extended family that has not been physically together in over 15 years is now together doing this trip. Are the kids going to walk off the boat and say, that was the worst five months I have ever experienced? The man is insane. The other side of the coin, um, could we be united as a family after all this time? I didn't have much of a family when I was growing up. It was kind of split apart. So this, this would really be something for me. This would be, I've been waiting a long, long time for this. Hmm. <laughs> This morning we woke up to uh, a computer crash and uh, for me it's just really upsetting to watch Clinton have to sit there and, and work on the computer for hours and hours and hours and, and it's one step forward, two step back kind of thing. Connect error number 10060. Bad username, what do you mean? No, it was Bacon57. My name is Clinton. I'm 38 years of age, captain for Sprague Theobald aboard the motor vessel Bagan, and director of marine operations for Hole in the Wall Productions. I like the aggressiveness of this adventure. It's uh, kind of boldly going where no man's gone before, not to be cliche. Let's go take care of the guns right now. Clinton, I was, I was also behind Dominic too, because I'm just concerned about the value of your time. I mean, this has been three days. Yeah, but I know, but we're right in, and the last thing we wanted to grab right there at the yeah. end was, was that weather, and we need weather badly. Okay. So, as long as you're okay with it, I just don't want to stress you out more than necessary. I'm, I'm stressed, but since we took the lines off, don't want to go away. Clinton can do this all day. I mean, he can do this for weeks. Yeah, for the last yeah. two days, and we've got to get him out of the chair. Yeah, yeah, and, and there's other things that need to be focused on, so. I think that's just what needs to happen. Yeah, I no mean, way. I wanted to be out of here by three. Um, so see if you can pull him off the chair. Okay. And just, you know, get him in a car. Uh, and I heard your conversation earlier, but we're going to make this, this 
computer's working fine. It's all going to... Well, my, my one thought... Our oh, hold, on, hold on, hold on. I'm going to talk to me. I'm working here. Clinton and I met in Newport, Rhode Island. We had sort of mutual friends from afar that uh, we knew together. So I just walked up to him and said hello. <laughs> okay, we're, 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 doing the, that, uh, we're doing that right now. Okay. This has to be taken care of with an internet connection. If we go offshore, we have no weather. I understand that, Clinton, but... Uh, but Dominique, but, we're not leaving until this works. Well, that's fine, but come back. Just get a breather. Take take a breath for a little bit, for an I, hour I, or two. I just... I just I, I'm 99.9% .9 finished. And so what I've been doing for the past 18 hours on this project, you want me to walk away from right now before I'm, I fire I'm it up. You know, this is a huge test on our relationship. Um, how, do, how well do we work together in, in extreme uh, levels of stress? It's 1.14. I know, but this we were hoping to leave right At 2 o'clock, right, and we can. We can just say, the, fuck the guns. But we don't the want to say, fuck the guns. All right, look, there's a book in the car. There's all the signature pieces of paper in there. Take somebody else, go do it. If not, you're going to have to wait till I finish this. That's just what's going to happen here. He's the captain. He runs the show. He decides this way or that, and he lives his life that way. All right, look, when you're the Please captain of this, we'll listen to you. you. I'm, do, I'm doing this now. I'm going to finish this. Okay. All right, where's the ding you got there? Clinton always referred to it as uh, letting off steam. I look at it differently because letting off steam doesn't involve personal attacks. We, we had a bit of a blow up and as it was, they were all going to go off the boat anyways to explore. I need to stay on the boat and write. I didn't join them. It was fine. They left the boat and while they were gone, I, that was probably the biggest crossroads of the trip. Uh, Clinton's attitude had gotten so bad and I've lost such confidence in him at that point that when they came back, I said, I'm just as willing to turn around and go back to Newport at this point because we're not even in trouble yet and already people are buckling. May I proceed?
fucking ask. All right, look, it's, it's, it's look, I can do the Thunder Board, I can do it, and then when you can't do it, it's why haven't you showed us how to do it? It's one way or the other. You either do it the way I tell you to, you fuck it up, and I, I show you how to do it the real way. My God. It's just landing a boat, for God's sakes. Fucking idiot. Baby crying fucking piece of shit. Dominique and Clinton have had some serious issues in their relationship aboard. You take everything, like, if you're so defensive and you take everything, like, I say, Dominique, will you do this? You go back at me and you go, well, you need to do this. Have you ever thought You come about right the back at me and I, I'm the captain here. Well, just, uh, you know, most Maybe of the time, it's your approach, most of, most of the time I'm pretty pissed at you because you're being well, defensive the whole time. So how can I, how am I Let your guard to? down. Just say, yes, sir, I'll do it. They've done their very best to try and keep it to themselves, but you can't do that on a 57-foot boat. Everybody gets affected. Everybody feels the tension. And you have to be exactly who you want to be, and if somebody barks at you about it, let them bark. You know? I'm doing the best I can to bite my lip and not say anything. And, and have it bounce off, but it just adds up after a while. You know, I'm not one of the guys. <laughs> I'm not, I'm, you know, and, and you, everybody just needs to respect that. I mean, you know, just understand that I work on a little different scale and um, I can't take the criticism and, and the picks and, and, you know, the short temper easily. Yeah, actually, you do put the stress on my shoulders. You're the one that is just cruel to me. How am I cruel to you? Before you've had coffee, you're the meanest person on this boat to me. And, that, and that's, that, that, that's it. And, and to be honest with you, I'm, I'm tired of it. So far, the trip has been eventful. Um, the relationship between Clinton and I has been very challenging. Um, something that I thought would grow and blossom seems to turn into, or has turned into, almost resentment and um, and hatred. Oh, a lot of it was there the whole time. It's been there. I've just been moving too fast to see it or want to see it, um, pretending it's not there. And when you're out here, it all comes to the surface. starting to go deeper and deeper into our own personalities and our own fears. It can be really isolating, really lonely. Um, I think you spend a lot of time thinking about yourself. It was going from a fun trip now to a, a hard job with unknown dangers ahead. Um, Uli's presence uh, was aggravating all of us, keeping us from paying attention to what was needed. There's something with the button up on the over. Here, fix it. No, take it. No, I cannot take it off of you. Clinton, this is not, this is not cooperative what you're doing. Okay, we'll see if you you're can totally uncooperative. You're, you're totally you're stressing me out. Yes, and you're totally stressing me out. This is a bad enough situation. I can't get my computer to work. So I'm trying to get the, the, the hook set. All right. Pain the butt, and all you want to do is worry about the microphone. Clinton wanted Uli to ask permission, and Uli wanted Clinton to seek permission. I've been holding off with this for half an hour, and this seems to be the first moment where something seems to be okay. So this is all going I've nice and not been in your face. Finally, at one point, I just made the decision he is going to have to leave the boat sooner than expected.
I have just uh, hiked one of the mountains and it's a simiote. It's pretty awesome um, being up here right now. You can see forever into the water. I can see a bunch of fog banks. Got the mountains behind me. It's peaceful up here. Uli's gone. This makes things a lot, uh, a lot more calm. Uli was a great guy. The presence of a camera was uh, way too much pressure, I can tell you that. Let's go ahead and look at this one more time. Can we, if we go back to that scenario, sort of recreate this to the best you can, that will be great. I was very disappointed with how the crew reacted. I don't, don't need to show off or want anybody to see what I'm doing. Just get all the cameras right. And anything else anybody want me to deal with? Then we'll go back to this. Uli is a professional and there are certain things he expected which we weren't able to deliver. So that you can be standing here? Yeah, I'm going to be standing here. Okay, good. Having somebody put a camera in your face, microphone in your face. Uh, I signed up to be a captain and an engineer and now I'm a part of somebody's film. The trip's been tough. It's, it's Gosh, how many times can you say that? The trip's been bad in some ways, great in some ways. We've seen some amazing shots. Uh, I'm not all that crazy about it right now because of these bugs. Oh, fuck this. I can't even talk. Today is July 23rd, and I hope you can hear. Um, we're still in Sissimuit. Had a crew change yesterday with um, <coughs> Chance and Greg, the Ascentus. Greg is kind of, in one sense, an outsider on the trip in that he's not family. And it's a hard position for him to be in. And I chose him because I've worked with Greg for about the past seven summers on an underwater archaeological project. Life's short. I'm glad I did this up until the day that, you know, the day before I was to leave, I didn't think I was going to be able to do this. You know, I had heard that there was a lot of tension on board, um, you know, making the trip up to Greenland, and uh, so I was sort of acutely aware and wanted to um, establish a new vibe for the boat. Both have a great attitude, and it's uh, they're they're refreshed. You know, the original intent, the original uh, goal, is still fresh in their minds. They haven't been at this for a month and a half, so it's it's a welcome addition. Dominique, right. get in there! Get in there! Yeah, go! Sit! Sit! Yeah, sweet. <laughs> Woo! So scared. Hey guys, can I be the first to tell you you're a couple of morons? <laughs> if you're good with it, I'm good with it. Well, uh, you know, one thing we have to think about here is big waves if one of these things cabs over. Uh, we're in about 500 feet of water, which would probably make that one to the last heart of ground. Uh, I'm good with it. They got me. Obviously, the, the the locals here pretty safe with it, and you know we're not gonna. Nothing's gonna happen here that's gonna roll us over. I don't think. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, do we want to get uh, do we wanna get in the rubber boat and get like shots of us look like we're going through this ice cave? Yeah. Let's just stop right now and get set up. Yeah, let's do that. You guys want to get in the rubber boat? Yeah. Okay. Eighteen months, baby. Two years, baby. Two years. Three hundred thousand dollars. <laughs> Look, it's nothing. Nothing. I got nothing. But I got this. And I got my family. What more can a man ask for?
the crew has really come together uh, since the arrival of Chance and Greg. Um, things have really calmed down. My role was really from the beginning was to sort of operate the cameras and 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 film. Um, although it had never been stated, um, I was the only one on board without a set role. I feel so great having my family along for this, um, having Chauncey and, and Spread reunited um, with Sefton and myself. It's just absolutely, absolutely a dream come true. is also wonderful to have on board. Uh, you can tell this is just a trip of a lifetime for him. For me, just, I mean, seeing the wildlife, experiencing the landscape, walking it, smelling it, feeling it, jumping in the water, all that. Um, I've always had an interest in the Arctic and the Antarctic. It does the first opportunity I've ever had. Oh, that's a shot. This was the team. We had, we had finally gotten together as a group, and this was the group that we were going to accomplish the Northwest Passage with. Heading into the passage, first thing I noticed, it was, it was like being in a vacuum and everything became gray and brown. Mother Nature is so strong up there, there are no indications of man's presence. So being in the passage, you know you are a visitor and you are there conditionally. I'm very excited about getting into the Northwest Passage. I think this is the start of a new chapter on this trip. Um, this is really the beginning of the trip in a lot of ways. This is sort of what everything's started off from. What do you think, Greg? I think it's pretty darn amazing. The landscape is just incredible. Is it kelp? Long. What the heck is that? Oh my god, oh my god, it's getting up! It's a polar bear! It's a damn polar bear! First one! Did you go okay up there? What's up? What's up? Polar bear on shore! Polar bear on shore! I thought it was a part of a glacier! Yeah. That little white it dot? It went behind the rocks. Yep. Unbelievable! I thought it was snow! This is this little white dot here? It got up over here. Take these. Yeah. We were rolling? About 8.30 this morning, we crossed over the 80th meridian, left Baffin Bay behind us, entered Lancaster Sound, and officially entered the Northwest Passage. The passage has been like an Arctic rail for centuries now. Man's been trying to find a shortcut between the Atlantic and the Pacific Ocean, and Hundreds of lives have been lost trying to find it. Almost as many ships have been lost. And finally, in 1903, Roald Anmason found the way through. He was the first guy to make it through. Since then, a handful of ships have made it, some successfully, some in one year, some in several years. But 
We were greeted. We had an official greeting party. We had six orcas tagging along for a while with us. We couldn't get too close to them. They're very shy, but dangerous creatures. Then we came further into land, and to our great delight, we saw not one, but six polar bears. Two of them, we think, were cubs. Uh, we followed them for a while. They looked at us suspiciously and definitely sent us a few further yards offshore. Right now, we're coming in close on one of the many glaciers you'd find here in the passage. Uh, the land's going to start to flatten out the further south we get. It took us six and a half weeks to get here from Newport, Rhode Island. We're going to be here for about three or four weeks, uh, uncovering a lot of history of the passage and hopefully a lot more wildlife. So this is the first day, and we're mighty glad to be here. Sixteen polar bears. Sixteen? Um, Ned, son. All right. So we come over here to check out the walrus. And then Septon's looking down the road a bit. He sees about a half a mile pole there coming to check out the walrus. And uh, we're just following the polar bear right now. out of the chamber now. Once you fire it, you'll be able to... Oh, Jesus. Hmm. Take it off, it's going to be your finger. Yeah, I'm left Are you left-handed? Okay, all right. Um, well, if you want to fire it left-handed, you can, but that's a right-handed gun. Put your left foot forward, lean into it, Get your sight, hand back a little bit, yep, a little better balance. When you got it where you want to, take your safety off with your right, with your finger. Okay, sight it, close your left eye, sight right down, aim, slow squeeze, a, a, exhale halfway, hold it, slow squeeze. Nice shot. Beautiful day, it's actually warm. What's the gun for? Uh, well, carrying guns, carrying weapons for polar bears. Uh, I doubt walrus would be an issue, but we did see polar bears yesterday on these shores, so um, protection only, not hunting. Worst case scenario in the last resort. Where's Sefton? Where's my gear? He does not take this film seriously. So we just uh, crossed 75 north uh, longitude. Scratch that. Sweet. <laughs> <laughs> so we just crossed 75 north latitude. Uh, we're on our way up to the Griffin Inlet. Uh, we're actually coming up here for the sole purpose of crossing 75 degrees north. So. Uh, <laughs> uh, we, we think we can see some wildlife up here. Um, it's only 30 miles away from beachy island and uh, we've got a couple days before we need to be in Resolute. We've got pack ice to the east of, excuse me, the west of us 
and uh, we're about, I'd say, four miles from our anchorage. In 1846, John Franklin, an explorer at the time, left England with two ships to set out to find the Northwest Passage. Uh, the Erebus and the Terror, they're both about 120 feet, uh, crewed by 129 men, state-of-the-art for the day. They got into the passage, and nobody ever heard from them again. One piece of paper on which two log entries a year apart were written. And the first entry on it said, all is well, continuing through. The second entry a year later says, Franklin dead, men dying. Two days ago, we sailed into Beachy Island, and we're anchored out here in the bay. Uh, Beachy is pretty historic in the fact that in the 1850s, this is where the Franklin expedition wintered for two long winters. They got frozen in. You can see by the graves behind me, some of them didn't make it. Three of the headstones here are marking where some of the crew was buried. Beachy Island is probably the most historic place in the Northwest Passage. It's uh, If the Northwest Passage is defined by John Franklin, uh, the expedition to find the Northwest Passage in the 1850s. This was the last area Franklin was ever seen alive. This place is surreal. I don't think there's any other word for it. It's like uh, it's like the backside of the moon. It's like Mars. It's like somebody flooded the Grand Canyon. Without a doubt, the most eerie place I've ever been. The landscape is so desolate, there's nothing. timbers back here where with the two years they were here the timbers they had tried to grow a garden oh man trying to grow a garden in the Arctic the desperation these guys must have felt I can't imagine it I mean here we were sitting with water maker and satellite communications the whole bit and the desperation that I felt that we felt being back in the 1850s with these guys I just can't they were a super breed I felt like we were uh, desecrating a, a, a cemetery. Um, it was all around the Northwest Passage, that feeling of something's wrong, something is not right. It's really been haunting. I don't like the water that much anymore. I don't want to be around boats. I feel bad about the trip. I haven't had enough distance to, to stand back and, and realize what a powerful trip it was. And this is therapeutic because this kind of shows me where it all started. You know, I'll be working, I'll be writing, I'll look up, and I'll start to feel that, that angst, that whatever it was that started during the trip. Take a deep breath and realize, okay, I'm here. There's somebody upstairs banging on their floor. Um, there's Manhattan over there. I'm not in the passage. So it's, apart from a beautiful picture, it's, uh, it's therapeutic, I hope. So after um, Beachy Island, the plan was to go to Resolute. Unfortunately, it was two miles thick of ice. Tomorrow night, we're going to make a decision. So we can download the, the next set of ice charts, and if they're still looking grim, and that gets any tighter. And I just think then we sit up in that area and wait. Yeah. And yeah. We could see Resolute. We could see the boats in there, but we couldn't actually get to them because of the ice. The central part of the passage is frozen solid still, and it's a waiting game. It could be 10 days, it could be two weeks. Uh, we have to sit and wait for it to thaw before we can get our way down to Cambridge Bay. See, if it opened up this much in 12 hours, there's another 12. 
There's another 12. Day and a half we're there. Is that wishful thinking? I, I think we may have to... We may have to uh, That's heavy that. drugs. There are some pretty strong consequences, though, if it doesn't thaw this year. We turn around, call the trip off, head all the way back to Newport, maybe try again next year. A worst case scenario, if the pack ice starts to get thicker and come down from the north, we could always get trapped here as well. Winter doesn't come in as fast here as it's going yeah, there. Yeah, right. So we're getting and we can a get, little bit. We can get south damn quick, you know. Yeah. We, we don't have all of this Alaska to get around. Yeah. We just go over here and turn the corner. We'd be in Newport time still see the tourists. Huh. No <laughs> rush for that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Mid-September. Well, we're not there yet, Spring. See, what ha happened was... Hasn't right. happened yet. Hasn't happened. Oh, give me oh. that, bro. I think but, I mean, I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't think that this is, you know, it, it's any it's anything bad to be turned around by the ice and be prudent. There's nothing wrong with it. I don't think I. I would feel actually relieved. I would think that we'd be making the right decision, you know, for the safety of all of us. Well, as stressful it is on us, I'm sure it's twice as stressful for Sprague. Yeah, he's got everything banking. Yeah. Well, and, and, and that, you know, I just feel that's going to ruin his trip. Yeah. He's sitting here stressing over it, stressing over it. It is what it is. Whatever has to happen, has to happen. Yeah. We're right here. We're going to make a decision tomorrow, and then we're going to go with it. No reason to stress out about it. You, know, you can't sit there, oh, my God, what if, what if, what if? What if a fucking meteor came out of the sky and blasted right. us to all the pieces right now? You know, that, that's not going to stop it. I think it looks pretty good, though. I think we're, we'll be okay. You're gonna sit here and watch, though, right? Yeah. You got right, green. green. Come on. Oh, that orange. Seven minutes. Seven minutes left on the tape. Not nearly fucking long enough. The trip started to take a different turn because of the, how the ice was flowing around. Um, it didn't look like it was certainly possible. So we were unsure as if we were to make it, we should turn around, what should we do? Should we maybe try to find an alternate route? This might not be as smooth sailing as we thought. As much as I think we are having a fantastic, most incredible time, um, some beautiful scenery and, and an absolute epic trip. Um, I think the boat has become a few feet too small. I'm getting dressed. Uh, I have a deep love for many of the people on board on this trip, but I can tell you I am thoroughly frustrated with the lack of enthusiasm. Um, and in general, just the spoiled nature of everybody on board. <laughs> You've got to be kidding me. There's no peace. Why, are you, why are you not in the mood? No, I just don't. I just, I'm just not in the mood for a camera to be in my face today. <laughs> Followed around and asked a zillion times what I'm doing. <laughs> no excitement, no enthusiasm, no energy, uh, no, virtually no commitment towards uh, making of this film, which has somehow been pushed on me. Can I ask you to not do that? Maybe. I mean, I couldn't do what you do. What? I mean, how do you work with five people who don't want to work with you? And yet, Right across the bow on this boat is a 10 foot long sticker that says northwestpassagefilm.com. I personally feel frustrated. Um, I'm tired. I'm tired of cooking. I'm tired of cleaning up after people. No one is not making it any better. Making what any better? You know, this is an absolute miracle trip to be able to see things 
that nobody or very, very few people have ever seen in the world. And yet, I've got a bunch of sour pusses walking around. Hey guys, up late enough to take a look at the new ice chart. We were checking the ice charts and, and checking the flow, and everything was a go. We got some encouraging news here. This is over here. Look how open that is. Holy there. shit. There's, <coughs> it looks like there's warm, air, warm water coming out of this bay. Yeah, it's just pushing out. There. Yeah, it's pushing out of there. There's warm water against that lead. There's warm water against here. So there's some rivers flowing. So if this is open, and that's open, and this opens first. Well, all this seemed to be, when we looked at our little chart, that, all of this, and in here, it will seem to be open. Yep. So. Wow. Okay, we're headed to uh, Rotsley Inlet from False Strait, uh, headed into the ice, trying to get south uh, as we make our way towards Joa Haven. Uh, this should be our first encounter with what we know is the ice pack down in Franklin Strait. Uh, we're e exiting Peel Sound and entering uh, um, Franklin Strait as we exit false straight. Lots of straights, lots of sounds, lots of names. No ice. No ice yet, but soon. Things changed pretty quickly once we pulled the anchor and started heading um, south. started coming around us um, bit by bit. There was a couple times where we'd go by a piece of ice and you'd see red paint on it. We had already been there. The thought of failure was in the air. The options were running out, and it was looking less and less by the minute that we were going to get out of this one. As the hours kept going by, it kept getting more and more congested. It was scary. It got scary. go and then we can we think we're out of it but we're just you can see around us we're just stuck in it um, it's looking like we're gonna have to push through this all night do everything we can to drive through it I think this uh, little scenario that we got ourselves into was a little bit more than any of us expected Half a mile turned into 500 yards advancing, turned into 100 yards, down to 50 feet, down to five feet, down to two inches. We couldn't go an inch forward, we couldn't go an inch backwards, we were stuck. I just got on shift this morning uh, after last night, after yesterday. It's definitely one of the most intense days of my life. Um, it was quite dangerous. Uh, it was slow. It was exhausting. Uh, scary. I mean, I guess this is what we asked for. I guess this is what we came here for. It's kind of like uh, one of those puzzles where, you know, there's six squares and you've got five cubes and uh, every move you make, you've got to move 
um, you know, another cube. But uh, as of right now, we are parked here. Um, I think we all, as explorers, as adventurers, need to understand what we're getting ourselves into. And uh, if lives are lost, that's the way it goes. Two pulls, feet out on the reel. Three pulls, pull up on the reel. Five pulls means there's emergency, come to the surface, come to my aid. Yeah, I, I put it into 20 feet. Sorry? It's roughly 20 feet. Can undo the com? Yeah, it's a little disconcerting looking at the boat. It's pretty stuck. <laughs> wow, we pushed a lot of ice out of the way. We took very little damage, we think. We had, Greg's gone for a dive and checked it all out. And we think we're in pretty good shape, except for this spot. That's about twice as much as you normally put on there. Let it dry between each coat. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh-oh. I'm out of here. <laughs> oh no, it's just the upper shelf. Don't worry. Come on, Cliff. Oh, <laughs> <What happened? laughs> get out of there. This is an eight-year-old. <laughs> all in all? Going well. Brutal day yesterday. Happy to be alive. When we ran out of options in the ice, and I mean out of options, we had no place to go. We couldn't go an inch forward, we couldn't go an inch backwards. I went into my bunk that night, and I said, whoever's watching over this, if I have any more favors left, if, please, please give us an option. I woke up the next morning, Chance was waking me up, said, come up to the pilot house and look at the radar, you're not gonna believe this. I mean, it looks like we, right literally, now it's we literally just have to get over there. It's moving, yeah, we, no, our, today, this, this is today's right here. Said that we needed to get over here, which is 12 miles, and now it's over here. We were still trapped in the ice, but we were seven miles down the coast away from danger. It's moved up some, so we're only, we're only 10 miles away. Yeah. Well, we're only, if, we, if we got 10 miles to get through the Northwest Passage, we're going to make it happen. Yep. Yep. So are you plotting where the ice potential ice starts? Yeah, I'm actually drawing in latitude and longitude lines. Actually, we're not doing too badly. We're not doing too goodly either. About but half we're a, half a mile an hour. Half a mile an hour in the direction we want to go. You know, the self-recriminations. What was I thinking? Why would I be so stupid? The reason I came up here was because hundreds of men have lost their lives up here trying to get through the passage. What's so nebulous about that? Hundreds of men lost their lives. Why can't the children? So it just, it grew and grew and grew. Go in neutral. Good job. Okay, he's bailing out so. The last two days in the ice were for me uh, total hell, complete and total hell. Um, I am whipped. I am mentally whipped. I thought I was tired before. The pressures of this trip are phenomenal. I'm to the point where I'm thinking that this was really a dumb idea. Um, you know, I want to, I want to stay humble. Um, I think the ice has a, a long whip, 
and uh, we still have a lot of miles to traverse. I can understand how people can get in trouble here very, very quickly. Yeah. Mother Nature rules. That's pretty much uh, I think the big lesson here. You know, if you can't adapt, you don't survive. Sometimes I feel like it's the trip of a lifetime, and other times I feel like it's the biggest mistake I've ever made in my life. I know I'm gonna look back on this with great pride and admiration for all of us. That's then, now is now. Today is August 30th, and it's a mighty special day indeed. About 15 minutes ago, we crossed 130th Meridian, which was our official exit of the Northwest Passage. We did it. We made it. One! Yay! 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 Woo! We made it. We made it. To, to say we feel honored, the whole crew feels honored, is, is not an exaggeration. Come on, hug! The Northwest Passage is one of the very last things on Earth you can do as an adventurist, and that, that not many people have done before. Many, many others through history have tried it, but through a combination of luck, perseverance, and I dare say perhaps a tad global warming, we managed it. I can remember this sort of like collective sigh when we realized that really only, you know, the depths of the ocean and the cosmos remain to be explored. You know, the Earth just became small. It was no longer this vast planet to be explored and uninhabited. Um, it was really just sort of a small planet that we had infiltrated every corner. Sefton, Dominique Chance, I saw them all really reach in to some deep, deep places, and they answered the bell every single time. The irony of it was the, the pro that I hired couldn't answer the bell. About two in the morning, I awoke to uh, Chauncey yelling, man in the water. That, I, I... <laughs> And uh, came up top. Uh, there were a few people around the boat, a lot of commotion, and it seems like Clinton had once again gone out partying, uh, got way too drunk, and fell in the water between the boat and the pier. It's okay, Tom. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Tom. That's it. What? Oh, yeah, that's it, it's right. Yeah. He was close to hypothermia. He couldn't speak. He's covered in dirt, um, diesel. He'd been in a ditch or something. Um, you alright? No, I just need some shorts. Well, yeah. Yeah, change of shorts. You know I'll what? Take your <laughs> I'll, you'll never make Donnie happy. <laughs> she's, uh, she's okay. The song's off too, huh? <laughs> Good luck. Good luck. Good luck. This was not the first time this has happened. Clinton going out drinking all night. I've, I've waited to hear that noise. It's, I'm just gonna completely unplug from everything to do with the dock, and I'll get the boat down. He's on the beach tomorrow. Uh, next morning, I went. We called a meeting. He didn't show up. What? He just left. I think he's still drunk. Um, not taking me seriously. 
I went to tell him he was needed at the meeting. He said he quit the trip. I think it was just time for him to go. I think he was over it. He was done. <clears throat> How did this all go so bad? What okay. do you mean? I'm having fun. He had spent an enormous amount of time with Sprague, an enormous amount of time, four years with my sister, and it was just time to leave. What the meat cack? So we are literally two hours away from leaving for the Bering Sea uh, without Clinton. We all carry demons with ourselves. We all carry our own demons. And I think, and this is just conjecture, but I think Clinton's got the best of him. I grew up in an alcoholic family, and I grew up with alcoholic abuse. Um, I grew up not trusting people who were drunk. The fact that me letting Clinton go was protecting my kids so they didn't have to go through what I went through when I was a kid. And granted, maybe it was not the same thing. And I knew it was the right decision within a nanosecond because there was no contrition on his end. There was no, I screwed up, let me try again, whatever. Basically what I got back was a fuck you. And he was gone. talk about dark things we met in the ice as far as fear and terror, man, that was nothing compared to how I felt when I was taking these kids through the Bering Sea and I was running every aspect of the boat, constantly listening to my attitude, I can't do this, I cannot do this, just, just do another hour, just do another two hours. It was a uh, pressure far greater than I thought I would ever be able to handle. I think he excelled wonderfully as a captain, and I, I think he enjoyed it a bit, too. It might have given him a little bit more of a, um, a, a purpose and a meaning. There was such silver lining in that black cloud because that is truly when the family came together. And, and it was, you know, maybe in a sense like, like a, a real father sort of, um, you know, taking his kids on this trip and having all of us involved. It actually was pretty funny as we first saw it happen. So everybody scrambled for the cameras and I, you know, I got on my high horse and I said that, all right, all the whale footage for this whole trip, there's always somebody in the background saying, ooh, look at that, or oh, isn't that amazing? So just be quiet. I want some clean video. So everybody's getting a camera set and the whale comes up again and it's me. And, Holy shit! <laughs> I was so undone about it. But we've got, uh, I don't know, I think we have four or five different times of him coming up, both of them. And then when we left the next morning, they were sleeping on the surface. And you just see them bobbing on the surface, and we just sort of glided past them. I don't, can't remember if we woke those up. We'd come across some other sleeping whales. But yeah, that was very cool. Also in a rush to get home. Ooh, 
It's nasty weather, really terrible, terrible weather. We had, you know, fishermen literally telling us to get the hell off, out of here and get moving. And that's when I started to delegate. I just couldn't do it anymore. Sefton, you're going to have to start learning the weather charts. You've been watching all summer. Do it. Dominic, get the pilot book out. You're going to have to start finding anchorages. I can't do all of this. The weather was turning at that point. sort of fell by the wayside at that point. That's ridiculous. Seriously, I can't look at that. I didn't have the stomach to ask Trance or Sefton or Dominique to say, can you make sure you get footage of this? Literally getting through an hour on watch was about all we had, all I had energy for, and I think with them as well. I'm just ready to kind of like wrap this film up, you know? Yeah, it's been a while. Talk about yeah, I, yeah. Think, I think we're all ready to just kind of be done with this thing. It's, um, it's been a long time. Uh, I, what's it been, two and a half years? When we came off this trip, I was like, this thing is unbelievable. We just shot, you know, 250 hours of footage. We've got enough footage for any editor to throw any story together he wants. I, I remember just feeling it right away. We hit the docks in Seattle and the whole enthusiasm for the project just went down the tubes. I came back with, I guess, about 280 hours of footage, and the plan was to put this documentary together. And I started working with the footage, and I found that I was dealing with something a lot larger than the trip. Uh, it was the beginning of, of the demons that I'm wrestling with. Did I put these kids, this boat, in jeopardy? Was this you know, a selfish thing just for my own benefit? I had had about 20 years of, of boating work, 25 years, about 40,000 miles of offshore work, and I came away from this trip feeling I had used up every single piece of goodwill with the ocean I ever had. I felt when I came out of the Arctic and through the Gulf of Alaska that I seriously felt the ocean was saying, and don't ever come back. You have really pressed your luck. What's going on? We are coming into Seattle a day early, actually. It, you know, life had been so repetitive um, that it was almost like we didn't, we haven't even had time to address Seattle. They're predicting possibly 50 knot gusts and there isn't really anywhere for us to anchor, so we made the decision being 20 miles away from Seattle that we just push on through and get there tonight. Here, let me sit somewhere else besides where you sit. All right, Chance, here we are. Oh my God, we're almost done. By the time we got to Seattle, all of us were in a dream world. I mean, we were all zombies. Long trip. Is this the Chauncey Tanton show? Yes, hi. We have a lot of Chauncey stand-ups. It's been This too is it, Sprag. This is it. I know, pretty anticlimactic, isn't it? For the duration of the trip, there was virtually no end. 
I mean, it just day in, day out, anchorage after anchorage, um, you know, leg after leg, it was the same thing. It was the same rhythm. And so I don't think any of us had time to really even comprehend that this thing might actually end at some point. Nothing happened. It was just a lot of diesel. You know, I remember just hitting the docks in, in Seattle and just not even understanding really what, that we had finished it. <laughs> We're here! What was good about the trip is, is that it ended. <laughs> you know, that was... <laughs> What's good about the trip is that I'm sitting here in a nice, warm studio talking to you. <laughs> What's good about the trip is, in hindsight, seeing what happened for the family. The bond that we formed, we found and created during that trip is tighter than anything I could have hoped for. It, uh, it, the depth of the love and compassion we have for each other now it, it can never be even slightly tarnished. Hey, let me get you. Oh, it's all right. Let me get you. Woo! One yes! Left. Okay. Yeah. But do you see how solid. perfectly it worked out in hindsight? Yeah. I mean, <laughs> one, two, three, four. Yeah. It was the four of us yeah. that brought the boat home. Yeah. I mean, that's, holy yeah. smokes. Yeah. And really the sheer massiveness of what we did, what we went through all together um, on a boat, on a 57-foot boat in the middle of nowhere. I, you know. It's surreal. It's really surreal to see families don't always stay together. And at some point, maybe years down the road, there's a bringing back together. And But to bring it back together in the friggin' Arctic? <laughs> and for Sprague to do these extraordinary things, he's done amazing things in his life. And I hope to you know, follow in those same footsteps. You know, this trip in a lot of ways has clearly put that stamp on a lot of our lives. I'm so love proud you of too. you. Thank you. I am. I'm so proud of you. <laughs> you too, cameraman. Yeah, we did it. Awesome. We're here. It's crazy.